here. Hello. Hi. Oh, wow. <laughs> How's everyone today? Have some more people joining us. Welcome, how's everybody? Great. Hello. Hi. Trying to manage my waiting room here. We're going to wait a couple of minutes. Um, people are still entering. Okay. So we have a couple more people that we're waiting on. Welcome, welcome. All right, so we're going to get started here. I'm Pam Bino Reed. I'm, I'm head of marketing and public information here at the Comet. And I want to welcome all of you to the spring 2021 session of the Comet Academy. So you will all be referred to as cadets as we go through the academy. And um, that's my name of the waiting room. And um, hope that you find this enjoyable. This is going to be active. You'll have um, an opportunity to ask questions after presentations. And um, I am thrilled to have at our first um, class, 
our executive director and CEO, John Ando. And I'm gonna read a little bit about John and let you all um, read in on the rest of it. He's originally from San Jose, California and started in public transportation at the age of 13 through performing a summer internship with the Santa Clara Valley Transportation Authority, working in the personnel and service development departments. He's wanted to work in the public transit industry as a transit manager since the age of five. He currently has more than 20 years of experience in the transit industry, managing small, urban, large urban and rural transit systems. He came to the Comet from Dutchess County Public Transit in upstate New York, where he served as the county transit administrator. Um, he's enjoyed a great deal of success in the transit industry and has been recognized with numerous awards, including the 50 most influential by Columbia Business Monthly for the second year in a row, most improved transit provider by the Arizona Department of Transportation, Financial Excellence Award by the Government Finance Officers Association, the Helen Putnam Award in Transportation Innovation for Transit Services, Top 40 Under 40 by Mass Transit Magazine and Association for Commuter Transportation. And this happened when he was under 40. Um, outstanding Public Transportation Operator under 4 million passenger trips by the American Public Transportation Association or APTA for transit services in Elk Grove and best small transit operator by the Arizona Transit Association and California Transit Association for Transit Services in Yuma and Elk Grove respectively. So during um, John's presentation, he's gonna to talk to us about the history of the Comet and the Comet family of services. Um, and we'll also give you an opportunity to kind of introduce yourself and just very briefly, you know, tell us a little bit about yourself or why you were interested in becoming a cadet in the Comet Academy. So I'll pass it over to Mr. Ando. Thank you, Ms. Bonner Reed. Uh, top of the evening, everybody. I'm John Ando, Executive Director here at the Comet. And today we're going to learn about who the Comet is, our history, what we provide to the community, and uh, where we're going from here. One second. Can everybody see? this presentation on the screen? Yes. All right, perfect. So I would like to start off with introductions. If you can uh, tell us your name and your organization you may represent, your interest in transit, how basically you got here, and perceptions or improvements of public transit that you'll like to share. And um, Pam, how would you like to do this? Okay. Alphabetical um, order or let everyone just jump in? I think we'll just let everyone jump in. All right. Who would like to go first? I'll go first. All right. Rhonda. Yes. Hi, everyone. My name is Rhonda Williams. I am the newly appointed visitor center manager for Experience Columbia. Um, I'm interested in taking this class and becoming a cadet because on a day to day basis, I encounter a lot of visitors who want some type of information about transit and how they can get around in the city while they're visiting attractions or just going place to place without driving their vehicles. So I was very much interested so I can become more aware of how the comment works. So I'll be able to share as much information as I can to those visitors, as well as residents of Columbia who inquire about transportation. Perfect. Thank you, Rhonda. I'll go next. Okay. All right, uh, Mr. Walker. Uh, good afternoon to you, Director Ando, and I mean, good evening, rather, and good evening to uh, uh, Ms. Pam and everyone else that is on this uh, Zoom uh, tonight. Uh, my name is Overture Walker, and I am a member of Richland County Council. And so some people refer to me as Councilman Walker, but tonight just refer to me as uh, Overture because I'm here to learn 
I'll just ask the rest of you. Uh, my interest in uh, transit uh, has more to do with uh, just for me concerns about quality of life. Uh, when I ran for county council uh, back in 2020, one of the issues I ran on was about you know improving the quality of life here in Richland County, and I think believe that you know transit uh, is very integral uh, to you know to that. Uh, or, or, can, or if you want to have a decent quality of life, I believe transit uh, you know, is conducive to improving the quality of life here in Richland County. Thank you. Uh, now people talk about food deserts or what have you. Uh, all these different I issues that involve the quality of life, I think transit touches each and every uh, one of them. Uh, so I'm on here tonight you know, to learn uh, and you know, I think I, I think I have a pretty decent understanding about uh, about mass transit. Uh, but every time I speak with Mr. Ando, I feel like uh, I have so much more to learn. Uh, so I am here tonight. Uh, I'm very attentive. I'm eager to learn and just uh, try to figure out ways that we can improve on transit throughout Richland County. So uh, thank you for having having me, Mr. Ando and Ms. Pam. Thank you so much. Thank you for being here. Next. Who would like to go next? Oh, hi, um, I don't know if you can hear me. Yep. Hi. Backwin. hi there. Um, I've been in Columbia full time for about four years now. I've been coming down to Columbia for about 10 years, but I grew up in New York City. So I spent my whole life using mass transit. Um, I'm still not that comfortable with a car though I do drive all over the place. And one of the reasons my husband and I chose Columbia is because you did have a mass transit system, which I think is just totally important and essential, um, especially as we get older, to have some place to way to get around town without having to use a car. So I'm hoping this academy gives me all the information I need about the comet that I can then share with my neighbors. Perfect, thank you. Welcome. I'll go uh, next. Hi, Sam. My name is Sam Noblet. I'm a staff member or project coordinator at, in the School of Public Health at the University of South Carolina. Um, I've been in Columbia. I went to undergraduate and grad school in um, South Carolina and been in Columbia since about 2006. Um, and really my interest in public health is on physical activity and sort of in relation to active transportation, but along with that is public transportation and Kind of what Overture said about access to food deserts and and how we can use public transportation as a means for uh, public health um, and increasing that. And I teach an undergraduate class um, and some of their program projects that they're putting together. Uh, the groups are interested in using transportation as a means to uh, as a part of their program. So when I saw this, I was like, well, it'll help me uh, help my students this semester by learning more about this, about the comment system. Thank you and welcome. All right, so I'll go next. Um, my name is DJ Polite, um, PhD candidate in history at the University of South Carolina, really focusing on race, um, empire, imperialism kind of stuff. Um, but I also represent the Sierra Club, um, both at the Midlands level and the South Carolina chapter level. So um, mostly coming to this, one, I am an, oh, I'm originally a New Yorker too, so I spent a lot of time in New York public transit four train blocks all the way, two stops away from the Yankee Stadium, which is one of the I'm a Yankee fan. Well, besides all that, <laughs> <laughs> but besides all that, because of my own um, research and work at the area club, I really look at public transit um, from a, an equity lens, from racial equity to economic equity um, as a positive lever for opportunity for individuals who are normally dispossessed or disenfranchised in different ways. So, um, anxious to learn and then hopefully lift up the positives um, of the comment and be a vocal advocate for the things that the comic can use more, I don't know, help with gaining from taxpayers, whatever, whoever needs to hear, if you will. 
Thank you and welcome. I can go. Um, I'll go next. Oh. Go ahead. <laughs> I'll wait. <laughs> Um, my name is Sharita Sims. I am the community health social worker at Richland Library. Um, so we are pretty familiar with uh, the Comet and your services. At one point in time, we were even um, providing bus passes to our clients. Um, however, as we are beginning to expand our services, um, I saw this as a great opportunity for us to just learn more about uh, mass transit, uh, what the city's plans are, um, and what we can do to just better assist our clients to um, obtain a more sustainable way of life. Awesome. Thank you. So I'll go next, if that's okay. <laughs> yes, please, please. Um, so I, it's funny how I think we're all kind of connected here in a weird way, um, in a good way. I'm, my name is Jessica. I work for Richland County EMS um, on the mobile integrated healthcare team. I am a uh, certified community paramedic and I'm also a nurse. Um, our program has been up and running for about five years. We were initially partnered with uh, Palmetto Health, now Prisma, um, to work with the um, uninsured or underinsured population which happens to be a lot of the low income, a lot of the homeless. Um, and uh, part of that was connecting them to healthcare resources, but then also we did case management and health education. So our program is really successful, kind of in a stopping phase because of the pandemic. Now we have our hands in a couple other things, but we're looking to pick back up. Um, public transportation is a, a vital <laughs> um, resource for that community. And um, we often um, got bus passes from Prisma um, to give to our patients. So um, I'm interested in seeing where the Comet is now, as opposed to three years ago when we were fully up operational um, and where it's headed. Awesome, thank you, Jessica. I can jump in if no one else yes. is ready. Please, John. Sure. I'm John Wilkinson. I'm the president of the Elmwood Park Neighborhood Association. Um, Elmwood Park is a downtown neighborhood. I guess probably the, the largest downtown neighborhood. We're right at the northwest corner of uh, Main Street and uh, Elmwood Avenue and have about 800 homes in our neighborhood. Um, first became aware of, of uh, the Comet Academy through the uh, Reimagine the Comet uh, initiative and read that entire report and participated in one of the stakeholder sessions and found it fascinating and realized how much uh, I didn't know about public uh, transit and the Comet in particular. So uh, we're eager to learn more um, as it impacts, you know, uh, our residents' ability to use public transit and to connect to other parts of town, um, reduction in traffic in a broader sense, and, and then all the other things uh, we're, we're yet to learn and will learn through this program. So looking forward to, to getting to, to know all of you through this. Thank you for joining us. Travis is. There we go. There we go. Um, okay. Yeah, Travis McNeil, I'm the executive director at Oliver Gospel Mission. Um, obviously, uh, so many people in need are also greatly in need of transportation. One of the large challenges. So uh, I would just want to know everything that I can become as knowledgeable as possible and uh, be the best collaborator that I can in the community. So good to be here. Thank you, Travis. And welcome. Yeah, I'll go next. If, All right. Uh, I can Alex. jump in. Um, yeah. I'm Alex Butler. Uh, I'm a new resident to Earlwood, which is another of our downtown neighborhoods. Um, but I've been in Columbia, uh, bounce around the downtown neighborhood since about 2002. Um, kind of like uh, John Wilkerson, um, kind of got involved with the Reimagine the Comet meetings um, and, and got some interest in how the bus system uh, and transit system work uh, and are connected and, and kind of what the plans are moving forward and just really want to learn, uh, you know, how, how the system operates and, and how it's going to grow moving forward. Thank you and welcome. Thank you. Down to the... Oh, go ahead. Okay, um, my name is Claire Windsor. 
Um, I'm from the University of South Carolina, um, and I'm a intern for the South Carolina Energy Office through the Office of Regulatory Staff as their Clean Cities intern. So I work under Ben Kessler from, um, he's a transportation um, specialist for the Energy Office. So we do a lot of work with electric vehicles, um, alternative fuels, um, any kind of things too that um, are in the realm of sustainable transportation. So that's what brings me here today. Um, I personally have an interest in um, sustainable transportation just from a perspective too of someone that um, tries as best as they can not to to use my own personal car. I, I bike everywhere um, or use mass transit just to be able to to have that um, that ease and just as a student too to be able to get around in a different way um, and not deal with parking issues. So um, yeah, I'm just interested to see what I can learn more and how I can apply this too to, um, to future career aspirations in city planning. So thank you for everything. Thanks for joining us. Uh, I'm going. I'm going to pick on some folks. Uh, Brittany Hart. Are you there, Brittany? Yes, Brittany Hart. I'm here. All right. Um, if you can tell us. Go ahead. Um. I feel a bit unqualified and um, out of place a little bit, but I'm coming from the rider side. I'm born and raised in Columbia, South Carolina. Um, pretty much have seen the transit of, well, the, um, the involvement of the bus system pretty much my whole life. So I've pretty much seen the transitions and turns from pretty much the age of two. Um, so I'm coming from a rider perspective, um, just trying to bridge the gap between the, um, I would say the whole comment system between riders, drivers, office systems, because it seems like there's a broken communication, let alone um, understanding from each part. So I'm just trying to gain understanding from that. Well, we welcome you and thank you for joining us. Uh, Joanne. Good afternoon to everyone. Hopefully everyone can hear me. I am the mother of Brittany Hart. I'm also a consumer who rides the city bus my whole life. And actually I'm on the transportation now because it, it is my mode of transportation that I alternate between a car and getting to work. And I also have the same concerns about her of how the city bus system is growing and moving and how it serves everyone in all communities and how to learn the intricate of the underwork of the transit system to make it better for all consumers and that all views are heard and make this make it better for everyone. I'm also concerned about some routes being cut and that the elderly cannot be utilizing the city bus effective as they used to be and they are being disregarded. And so I'm kind of concerned about how can it be expanded to serve all communities since it is growing. And I'm also concerned about the intricates of it being for all consumers because we pay taxes just as well to the penny tax serves everyone. So I really want to know the underlay of how it works. That's why I'm coming to this court and to make it better for Columbia. Well, thank you and welcome. Um, Kimberly. Um, good afternoon. Um, my name is Kimberly Simmons. I'm an intern here at the Comet. Um, I'm a marketing intern and a student at Spartanburg Methodist College. I'm studying um, marketing and I'm here because I wanna be able to learn how transit works and how they get their message out there when it comes to like big things like the like COVID-19, how they still run their service and how everything still keeps moving along. Awesome and welcome. David. 
Hi there, everybody. My name is David Bonetta. Uh, I am a sophomore here at the University of South Carolina studying business and geography and an intern under Amy Johnson Eli at the Palmetto Cycling Coalition, uh, working in understanding multimodalism here at the university and in the city of Columbia. Uh, prior to this, I came from up north. I grew up in New Jersey, and so I grew up using NJ Transit and the MTA up in New York City. And I used to do some advocacy work through the YMCA, and I got to do a lot of research on public transportation at a national level. And I really want to understand how those concepts fit in at a local level and how to implement uh, a lot of lofty goals and kind of use Columbia while I'm here as a test subject before I go back home in a couple of years. Awesome. Thank you. Last but not least, Blake. Hey everyone, my name is Blake Gibbons. I'm a sophomore at the University of South Carolina, double majoring in geography and political science. Um, if you also can't tell, I'm a transit services intern at the Comet. Uh, Kim and I are actually in the same room right now. So if you let me see me look back, it's just because Kim is there and I'm not crazy. Uh, my interest in public transit, I think, kind of stems from both my geography and poli sci backgrounds. You, know, you can kind of plan the route, plan the uh, demographics of people. Poli sci you can really implement that. Um, and really public transit is a way that people don't really think about, but it can be a way to boost your economy and bring a lot of people out of poverty and, and increase the health of a region. Um, I know public transit has a lot of perceptions that are, you know, some, some somewhat un, unfounded about being, um, you know, kind of dirty or, or not, not cool or hip, but the comment really is doing a good job of making it cool and hip, especially, you know, if you have seen our buses going down the street. They are very cool and hip, very bright. Um, so I'm excited to be here and learn more about the Comet and just network with all you guys and excited to be cadets in this together. Well, thank you, Blake. All right, we are going to uh, move on. Sorry, one second, there we go. Okay, so the history of the comet, we have a long history. Uh, back in uh, 1929, uh, there's a company called the Broad River Power Company. They basically were responsible for providing electricity in the Columbia area. And they were compelled by the Attorney General of South Carolina to operate streetcars. And the streetcar network operated primarily in the city of Columbia. In uh, 1930, uh, the US Supreme Court had to intervene to ensure that this operation continued to run in a seamless manner. Then in 1935, there was the Public Utilities Holding Company Act that basically regulated that public utilities must provide public transportation services in uh, the cities that they served in South Carolina. So in addition to Columbia, Charleston, Spartanburg, uh, Greenville, all of their transit systems, whether they were buses or streetcars, were actually operated by the utility company. So this kind of gives you an idea of the annual report of the Broad River Power Company and uh, basically all of their assets and liabilities. And one thing to note is that the railway system that they were running uh, basically for one, one million, $1.8 million was they treated it as a liability and they just did not want to be in the business to be providing public transit services. So this kind of lays into the foundation of how we get to the comment today. So in 1936, um, the last streetcar by then was South Carolina, um, electric and gas, uh, what went out of service and SCE and G converted to an all bus fleet. Then in 1997, SCE and G acquires a, a um, Georgia gas company and became part of the Scana Corporation. In 2001, after negotiations between Scana and the city of Columbia, the city acquires the Columbia bus system from SCANA, and at the same time, they transfer that purchase and assets 
to what is now known as the Central Midlands Regional Transit Authority. So just so you get a perspective of the ridership history going back to 1986, while the transit system was under SCE and G, SCANA, and then the Comet, you'll see that back in 1986, the transit system carried close to 4.4 million passenger trips a year. And then since then, it's just been on a downward trajectory uh, where we had the most significant hit, and I'm gonna go into that next, was back in 20, between 2006 and 2013, when we ran out of funding from SCANA to operate the transit system, and we had to make a significant uh, reduction in transit service. When the penny tax passed in uh, November of 2012, you'll see that ridership started to increase because we've in essence been able to rebuild the transit system. And now we, we ended fiscal year 2018, uh, or excuse me, 2019 pre-pandemic at 2.8 million passenger trips. As of fiscal year 2020 with the pandemic, we dropped to 2.4 million passenger trips. So that gets to us. We are known officially as the Central Midlands Regional Transit Authority. The Comet is our brand name, and you'll see the Comet on all our marketing materials on the sides of buses, bus stop signs, and that's how we associate ourselves. We were officially created in 2000, and we are known as a regional transportation authority under the South Carolina Code of Laws. So in essence, we're a government agency. In order to form our regional transportation authority, the, go the local governments have to come together to create this entity. And that was done in 2000 by Richland County, City of Columbia, and Lexington County, as well as all the jurisdictions. Back in 2013, when the Richland County penny passed, a revised intergovernmental agreement was signed by Richland County, Lexington County, Cities of Forest Acres, and the City of Columbia, which basically spelled out how the authority was going to be funded and how it was going to be governed. Our official boundaries are the same as the Central Midlands Council of Governments, which includes Richland, Lexington, Newberry, and Fairfield counties. However, we're only operating primarily in Richland and in Lexington counties. So continuing on our historical timeline, October 16, 2002 was when um, the Comet officially started operations. After the asset transfer from the city, setting up the governance, we officially took over the bus system from SCENG at that time. In 2008, um, the local governments worked to um, see about placing a penny tax um, on the ballots of both Richland and Lexington counties. However, those county councils elected to not pursue a tax at that time. So the following year in, two, in, in 2009, the SCENG transitional funding ends and that created a significant deficit in the transit system. Um, and we continue to then work with the local governments to contribute some of their funding out of their budgets to keep public transit going in Richland County and in Lexington County. In 2010, uh, Richland County elected to uh, put the penny referendum on the ballot, however, it failed. Uh, Lexington County at the time did not uh, choose to do a penny referendum at that time. So negotiations continued with Lexington County on how to fund public transit on their side of the river. Then in 2012, because of the referendum has failed and the efforts of uh, getting local government funding uh, was not available, the Comet had to make a 45% service cut. And that resulted in a lot of routes being eliminated, routes going every hour, uh, no weekend service being provided. But however, in November of that year, Richland County uh, voters did pass a penny sales tax. So starting in July of 2013, when we were able to access the funding, we began to add services and restore the lost services from the past. And at the same time, was when we created the Comet brand, the branding that you see on the buses and established basically a new governance of how we were gonna provide public transit in Richland and Lexington counties. 
also at the same time, um, Lexington County um, municipality started contributing to the transit system. So um, what you see here is the mission and the vision of the comet. And this was adopted back in 2013. The mission is basically that the comet will provide safe, reliable, efficient, and customer-friendly mobility services throughout the Midlands region and stimulate economic development and enhance the quality of life. And our vision is to provide a high quality public transit service that contributes to the economic development, environmental sustainability, and mobility solutions throughout the Midlands. And we live by uh, our mission and vision statements. And you'll notice that a lot of the things we've done in the past several years uh, relates to these actions that are spelled out in our mission and our vision. Our core values at the Comet, which is incorporated in our strategic plan is uh, safety, reliability, friendliness, cleanliness and comfort, and cost effectiveness. Uh, we believe that these core values is what makes a successful public transit system. And we want to ensure that by meeting these core values, we're providing the public with the best uh, possible public transit system that money can buy. So uh, the Central Midlands Regional Transit Authority is governed by a board of directors. And presently on our board of directors, uh, we have representation from Richland County, the City of Columbia, the City of Forest Acres, Richland County Legislative Delegation, Lexington County, Lexington County Legislative Delegation, Town of Eastover, City of West Columbia, City of Casey, Town of Springdale, Town of Irmo, Town of batesburg Leesville, and the Town of Chapin. All of those jurisdictions I mentioned have some form of the Comet bus service going through their jurisdiction, which is why they have representation on the board. And they all contribute to the transit system uh, to ensure that the transit system is successful. The board of directors generally meets uh, twice a month on the second Wednesday and the fourth Wednesday of the month. They set the overall policy of how the transit system is to govern. And as I mentioned before, we're separate and apart from the other local governments as a regional transportation authority. You as a public member could be a member of this board of directors. Every so often, each of the member agencies will uh, do a call for board members. A term is a three is a three year term, and uh, their elected bodies, whether it's their councils um, or boards, would make that appointment to the board. Uh, we have several members from our board of directors that are actually public members. And then we also have several members from our board that are elected members from their respective councils and boards. So the comment, as I mentioned, is a service of the Central Midlands Regional Transit Authority. It's our brand name. We provide countywide public transit services on 33 fixed routes, four reflex services, and 12 U of SC transit routes with a van pool service, subsidy programs with Lyft and Uber at night into the grocery store, bike share stations in Columbia, volunteer transportation and um, subsidized uh, transportation for seniors and persons with disabilities, and a DART ADA paratransit service for persons with disabilities. And we primarily provide service in Richland and Western Lexington counties. We transport about 2.4 million passenger trips a year on a fleet of 89 buses, trolleys, and vans. We primarily run from 5.15 in the morning to 10.15 at night, seven days a week, except Thanksgiving Day and Christmas Day. So specifically about the Comet fixed routes, um, as I mentioned, our services are in Richland and Lexington counties. Um, we do have express routes that go into Newberry and Sumter counties. Uh, we primarily run a uh, big bus service on corridor routes, primarily on Main Street, Farrell Road, Divine Street, Gardner's Ferry Road, Two Notch Road, Forest Drive, and Broad River Road. We have neighborhood routes that uses smaller buses and cutaway vans in Columbia, Forest Acres, Casey, West Columbia, Springdale, as well as the unincorporated areas of Richland and Lexington counties. We have connector routes or shuttle routes that service um, down, like downtown areas of Columbia, as well as uh, the soda cap connector service. Express routes that travel over, along uh, Gardner's Ferry Road, I-26, and to Amazon and Nephron. 
We have 1,558 bus stops throughout our service area with 85 bus shelters. We generally space bus stops every thousand feet. And we have a lot of attractive amenities to make riding transit fun and festive. Wi Fi's on every bus, cell phone chargers, bike racks, emergency ride home program for those riding express routes, books to read in partnership with Richland Library, security cameras. And then we also have contracts with the City of Columbia, City of Casey, and Richland County Sheriff to ride our buses, patrol our bus stops, and patrol Comet Central so that we can keep our passengers safe from any criminal activity. This is the Comet system. Uh, the map might be a bit small, and we'll be able to provide you with copies of the system map. But this shows you basically where we have all of our routes as of February 8, 2021. And you'll see that uh, we're very expansive with our service. Most of the service is in Richland County because of the fact that most of the funding of the transit system comes from Richland County. And then the balance of the service is in Lexington County. The Soda Cap Connector is a service that started in 2017. It's meant to be a downtown visitor uh, circulator and to provide transportation to um, visitor attractions, office uh, parks, the State House, and major destinations in downtown Columbia, Casey, and West Columbia. Uh, we have four routes that are part of the Soda Cap Connector. Uh, route one basically connects the Vista, West Columbia, and Casey with Main Street. Route two connects Five Points, Waverly, U of SC, and Main Street. Route three uh, operates when the Fireflies are playing and connects Main Street, Bull Street District with Segra Park. And then Route 4 is a loop route, which is known as the Orbit, and it travels on Sumter, Assembly, Blossom, and Richland Streets. Provides high frequency service. Presently, the service is free. However, it's soon to charge a fare. It operates seven days a week from 9 a.m. to 6 p.m., and the routes generally operate every 30 minutes. And this is the route network of the Soda Cap Connector operating in the downtown Columbia, Casey, West Columbia areas. Uh, we have partnerships where if you actually uh, want to uh, get a discount at the State Museum or rafting with Palmetto Outdoor or theater tickets at Kroger Center of the Arts, um, you just simply show a comment pass and they will give you those discounts. We also have additional discounts with uh, Richland Zoo, um, it's not Richland, sorry. Riverbanks Zoo and Garden, and um, the uh, Harbison Theater at uh, MTC Harbison Campus. Oops, going backwards. And then this is the fourth route, which is the Orbit, and it basically provides high frequency service on downtown streets and connects basically uh, major downtown destinations. And the uh, image on the right is what a typical soda cap connector sign looks like. The intent of the name soda cap connector was to just go off the pun of Columbia being the soda city and, and cola. U of SC Transit is a new um, service that we just recently started providing as of September of last year. Uh, the University of South Carolina pays 100% of the cost of U of SC Transit and it's not subsidized by any of the tax funds that the Comet receives. And as part of us operating U of SC Transit under contract to the University of South Carolina, the service is now open to the general public. So now there's an additional 10 daytime routes circulating in the downtown uh, area of Columbia, uh, primarily on U of SC campus connecting people to various destinations on campus. And then there's two evening routes that run between 6.30 at night to 12.30 in the morning. Uh, the service primarily operates year round. And then there's uh, connecting routes to MTC Beltline and MTC Airport campuses. DART is a service that um, provides complimentary para ADA paratransit service for persons who have a disability that prevents the use of the Comet services or accessing the Comet stops. In order to use this service, you have to apply and go through an eligibility process. Once you're deemed certified, you can have, in essence, door-to-door -door service uh, 
anywhere within a three fourth mile radius of a comet non express bus route in Richland and Lexington counties. Uh, this service is very important to those that have disabilities that need to get to dialysis and appointments or uh, medical appointments, shopping, and other quality and life opportunities. Reflex is a service that we provide in the rural areas of our service area. And it's basically two services in one. It follows a bus route, but also if you want to have the bus come to your door uh, as a member of the general public, you can pay an additional $2 and the bus will do that, will do just that. Uh, we provide this service in Denny Terrace, Hopkins, Lower Richland, Eastover, Gadsden, and Batesburg Leesville. And most recently, we just started uh, a new reflex route to replace the former Route 74 in the downtown Forest Acres area of our service area. Um, the service primarily operates seven days a week and it's just an innovative way of connecting public transit to people who may not uh, have the ability to walk to a bus stop. The Comet on the Go is a new, is a program we started in 2018 to tackle transportation challenges in the Comet service area. Uh, there's two programs as part of the Comet on the Go, that's Comet at Night and Comet to the Market. With the Comet on the Go, the Comet pays the first $8 of an Uber or Lyft trip, as long as you're using it within the program parameters. If you have a disability or you don't have a smartphone or you don't have a credit card, we'll provide Dart service to you to um, basically travel at night or get to the grocery store. Um, we've, we're spending approximately $300,000 for Comet on the go. So starting with Comet at night, this service is available anytime to anybody from 8 p.m. to 6 a.m. And you can go anywhere where there is a the Comet fixed route. We're spending about $150,000 to run this program. And this program replaced 12 bus routes that costed the Comet $335,000. And that was carrying less than 1.5 passengers or less on average. In order to access Comet at night, you just simply have to get the code which is posted behind the driver on all of the Comet buses. The code changes monthly. So as long as you ride the Comet, um, you can get the code and ride Lyft or Uber and you can go anywhere you wanna go at night. So if you have a job at Walmart and it gets out at 11 p.m. and there's no more buses running, you just simply put that code in the Lyft or Uber app and you'll get a Lyft and Uber car that will pick you up at Walmart and take you directly to your house. Um, if you could do it for $8 or less, you owe nothing. Um, if, you, if it costs $8.01 or greater, then you only pay the difference from the $8. Comment to the market is a creative way to address getting people who live in food deserts to access fresh food. Um, in the Columbia metropolitan area, there are significant food deserts and working with DHEC and the Central Midlands Council of Governments, as well as the City of Columbia's Food Policy Committee and South Carolina's uh, Food Policy Council, we were able to create this service to where um, it's open to anybody. It's available from 6 a.m. to 8 p.m., which is during the hours of most grocery stores. And you can basically get a Lyft or Uber trip. And if you can't use Lyft or Uber, we'll send a Dart vehicle and we'll pick you up as long as you live or as long as you live in a food desert area and you're going to or from a fresh food grocery store that has fresh produce and fresh meats. We have geofenced the Lyft and Uber app to identify every grocery store in Richland and Lexington counties and you can basically choose which, whichever grocery store you'll like to go to. We allow two trips per week. So that's basically to go there or and to come back. And after 8 p.m., uh, since some, um, several grocery stores and Walmarts are open, you can use the Comet at Night program to still access those destinations without the restriction of living in a food desert. This is the service area of of Comet on the go to give you perspective of where you can actually utilize the Lyft and Uber service. 
Blue Bike is, um, is the bike share system in downtown Columbia. Um, Blue Bike is an extension of the Comet system. And as long as you ride the Comet, you can ask the bus operator for a slip, which will give you a code to access Blue Bike free of charge. Um, the way to use Blue Bike is you basically, once you get the code from the bus operator, you put the code into the Blue Bike app and then it would automatically unlock the bicycle at the uh, 18 stations throughout downtown Columbia. The Comet owns eight of those 18 stations. And uh, we, we invested 250,000 into this program to allow uh, Comet riders the ability to have basically bicycle transportation in downtown. We contract uh, with Bewegan, which actually operates the uh, blue bike system. And this map shows you where all the blue bike stations are uh, throughout the downtown Columbia area. The stations in purple are the stations that are um, owned by the Comet and the stations in blue are the ones that are owned by Blue Cross Blue Shield. I should also add that while you can ride blue bike free of charge with the code, you only have a 45 minute session. So you have to return the bike within 45 minutes and then you can actually recheck it out again for another 45 minutes. And the reason why it's limited to 45 minutes is to ensure that there's enough bicycles for people to utilize the program. Uh, there's a total of 135 bikes scattered between these 18 stations in the blue bike system. The Comet Van Pool is a program for people who work at employers that are commuting from areas where we don't have the Comet bus service. Uh, we have 13 vans in operation today and it's about to become 14 later on this month. We pay the first $500 of the cost for a group to rent these vans from Enterprise. And how you can rent these vans is basically you just need to form a group of people that is going from one particular area to a work site. Uh, many of these vans go from various areas in Richland and Lexington County to Fort Jackson or the Columbia VA Hospital, or even uh, the Shaw Air Force Base. And we use federal funding to help us in paying for the cost of these vans. And the vans are open to anybody. And if you wanted to join one of these vans, you simply go to Commute by Enterprise's website, and you can uh, basically register to join uh, any one of these vans. Our latest mobility program we just launched is called uh, V-Trip, uh, which is the volunteer transportation program and pickup program, also known as PUP. This program is only available to seniors 65 years old and older and persons with disabilities that live in the Columbia urbanized area. Starting with V-Trip, V-Trip is very easy to use. Once you sign up and determined eligible, all you need to do is find a friend to uh, take you wherever you need to go and we'll reimburse you as the participant at 56 cents per mile up to 100 miles each month. And you can go anywhere in the Comet service area. The pickup program um, is, an, is another unique program where we'll give a senior or a person with disabilities a $50 subsidy on a credit card where they can get transportation anywhere in the Comet service area via a taxi, Lyft, or an Uber each month. So if you wanted to have, like if you wanted to go from your house to the grocery store and it was much easier for you to uh, take a taxi versus uh, navigating the Comet bus system or DART and you're determined eligible, you just simply use this credit card that we will give you uh, while riding the taxi cab and it'll cover your cost there and back. The program's available 24 hours a day and we're using uh, funding from what is called the 5310 program for seniors and persons with disabilities to cover the cost of, of operating these programs and paying these subsidies. An upcoming that we have uh, on the docket is uh, we're looking at doing some form of a micro transit using minivans in the Irmo and Northeast Richland areas and how this sub program would work. It's basically a minivan that would pick up you in a zone and it'll connect you to a super stop where you can connect with other the Comet routes to get to anywhere uh, throughout our service area. And this is gonna be in areas where we do not have public transit today. So it's gonna be a new test market 
so we can learn how um, we can provide better public transit services in those areas. And then we are in partnership with Transit where we'll have basically one app where you'll be able to get bus, bus schedule information in real time, order a Lyft uh, car or an Uber car, uh, connect with uh, various other transit operators that come into the Columbia urbanized area, um, res um, unlock a bicycle through the blue bike system and do your trip planning where if you need to plan your trip from your home to your work, it'll tell you what routes to take and how long it'll take you to get there as well as when the bus is going to arrive. Uh, this app is going to be uh, very helpful as, as it relates to helping you basically plan your mobility choices of getting around the central Midlands. So um, one thing about the comment um, that many of you may not know is that we are a, while we are a regional transportation authority, a government agency, only 20 of us actually work for the comment directly. The balance 215 people work for private companies that we contract with to operate and maintain the Comet system. Uh, for instance, the folks that drive the Comet buses, Dart vans, they don't work for the Comet, they work for a company called RATP Dev. They're based out of Paris, France and their local headquarters is in Fort Worth, Texas. And they actually hire the people to operate the buses, maintain the buses, dispatch the buses, and do anything necessary to actually operate and maintain the transit system. We also contract with smaller businesses called disadvantaged business enterprises um, to help provide supplemental services to support the transit system. The security guards at Comet Central come from New Age. Uh, the landscaper comes from Capital Building Services. The janitorial comes from Capital Building Services. The uniforms that the drivers wear uh, come from uh, Ed Rush Consulting. The bus stop maintenance is done by Capital Building Services. The detailing of our buses to keep them clean is done by CarePro. The paratransit service, which is op, which is the DART drivers, it's by a subcontractor called Transport Care Services. And as I mentioned earlier, the van pool programs with Enterprise, the bike share program is with the Wigan. Uh, so that kind of gives you a perspective that in order for us to deliver the many services that we provide, we have to engage private contractors to help us in delivering those services. And then the Comet staff oversees and ensures that those contractors are providing those services in accordance with the contract that has been established. This kind of just shows you a perspective of our various um, uh, modes that we provide and our branding. Uh, we, we strive to have everything match uh, together so we have a cohesive transit system that the public can understand and recognize. And then we've been building more bus shelters throughout our service area. Uh, we're getting ready to install another 20 bus shelters throughout Richland and Lexington counties. And that's the new design that we've been building throughout the service area. We're also selling advertisements on all of our buses and bus shelters to generate additional revenues to support the transit system. And then those are our trolleys that we recently obtained from Lansing, Michigan, which we run on the Soda Cap connector. So that's my contact information. And I encourage each of you, uh, if you ever have questions, comments, or thoughts to reach out to me at any time. Um, you have my office number and my direct cell phone number, as well as my email. Um, and I will be happy to answer any questions about this presentation and um, any thoughts, questions, and suggestions. And I'll also read some of the questions from the chat box as well. So I'll turn it off to, um, to you guys if you have any questions about us. Yeah, John, I'm going to read some questions from the chat room um, really quickly. Um, and I have said that we will send the recording of this meeting and copies of the presentations after each class. Um, when is Rhonda wants to know when is the effective date for soda cap to charge a fee and how much will the fee be and any discounts available. So 
um, the soda cap connector fare will be charged once we resume starting to uh, charge fares on the entire transit system. And it's going to be a dollar uh, for basic. And basic is 18 to 64 years old or those that do not have an ID to qualify for a discount. And then the discount fare would be 50 cents. If you have a the comment one day, th five day, seven day, um, 31 day or 10 ride pass or a transfer, you can use that on soda cap connector for no additional fee. Thank you. And then there are several questions about some of the newer services, like when were they introduced and how do you access them? And, and John, I could actually take those questions. Um, so a lot of, anytime we introduce a new service, we put out a press release and we also put it on our website um, so that people you know, can reference back to it. We also put it out, push it out on social media as well. Um, they can be found on our current website under what's new, um, where we have copies of what the uh, rack cards look like. And the rack cards can be found at Comet Central and also on the buses. And we distribute them out in the community. Um, let's see. When is the trolley in service? Rhonda wants to know. Um, she says she only sees it once in a while. So the trolley is generally in service uh, daily. Uh, right now, there's a mechanical issue that is being resolved by our contractor. Um, and once that mechanical issue is resolved, they'll be back into routine services on routes one and route four. Okay, Sam says he's excited to see the use of the new U of SC routes when campus is back to full capacity and use next fall. But I think uh, the U of SC routes are open. I mean, they're they're fully functional right now. Yeah, they're they're functioning right now and they're open to the general public. Uh, one thing I do want to add that this, the partnership of U of SC actually helps the overall public transit system because we can now count the ridership of the university. Uh, folks riding U of SC Transit as part of our overall reporting to the federal government, which will generate additional federal funds to the public transit system so that we can use it to expand common services throughout our service area and provide a lot of these mobility choices that we previously mentioned. Okay, David um, said you mentioned slips for a few of the partner programs that users can get from drivers. And are these available on the app as well? And I can, I'll can i answer that for you, David. Um, the slips that we were talking about are for Blue Bike. And I don't think that's available through the app because you have to actually get it from the driver um, when you're riding the bus to get the free 45 minutes of Blue Bike. Um, and then to continue on that, as it relates to codes for comment to the market and comment at night, the comment at night code is always posted behind the driver. And the reason why we don't advertise the code broadly is because it's the program is really meant to be an extension uh, for people who are using the public transit system. Comment to the market, we do market broadly and that code is comment market 20. So we want people to use that program um, in the general public uh, just so that they can have access to fresh food and um, not be challenged by transportation and getting to a grocery store. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Ando. And I know that um, my presentation is next and it's about comment in the community, about marketing promotions and the media, but we really try to keep these classes to one hour in respect of your time. So if you don't mind, I'll move my presentation to one of the later classes, uh, probably the day that we do our ride along. Um, since that's not a full class, um, I'll probably do that to start off or, or, or figure out a way to fit it in so that everyone gets, you know, all of the classes that you were promised. Sound good? All right. Thank you everyone so much. Um, we really appreciate you being here tonight and appreciate your interest in the comment. I know I'm facing the wrong way. <laughs> appreciate your interest in the comment. We thank you, Mr. Ando, for making time to be with us tonight. 
Um, and uh, Councilman Walker, thank you so much as well, and each and every one of you for being here. And we look forward to seeing you next week. Another uh, couple of things as far as uh, housekeeping is, again, um, I will send an agenda for before each class, but I'll also send you the preceding classes um, recording of the class so you can, and, and with a link to YouTube, so you can go ahead and visit that in case you miss part of part or all of the meeting. Um, and also, we'll send you those as well. So thank you all. And I hope you have a wonderful evening and I look forward to seeing you next week. Thank you. Happy trails. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye -bye. Thank you.